more breaking news. It is big news tonight. The Washington Post reporting that special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation now includes the president and the question of whether or not he obstructed justice. Adam Enta shares a byline on this for The Washington Post. I spoke to him just before airtime. Adam, this is extraordinary reporting. It's your reporting. Explain to, to our viewers why it's so significant. Well, I think you really need to understand that uh, when, uh, when Comey uh, spoke to the Senate Intelligence Committee uh, uh, last week, uh, he, had, he had assured, uh, he explained how he had assured Trump that he wasn't uh, being investigated personally. And so what we've learned here is that, in fact, there was a change within the FBI, and, and they were investigating him for, uh, for potential obstruction. And what we learned is also that there were a series of interviews that the special counsel had arranged with top intelligence officials, uh, potentially as part of that investigation. And, and based on your reporting, that change came about, as I understand it, because of the firing of Comey. Right, and, uh, you know, obviously Comey testified that that was his intention uh, in leaking the memos detailing his communications with the president. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's uh, uh, what we learned is actually uh, that this, uh, uh, this decision to open this file, if you will, on, on Trump uh, was made actually before the special counsel is actually named, which is just, just a few days later. But, but, I mean, for President Trump, the irony is his own actions... Uh, in firing Comey uh, actually led to then this uh, evolution, uh, which, I mean, ultimately led to the special counsel, but it also then led to the special counsel, according to your reporting, now investigating him for obstruction. Right. I mean, when you, when you think about it, uh, you know, when, when uh, Comey, in, when he, in his first meeting with the then-president-elect Trump, uh, he, he assures Trump that he's not the target, that he's not a target of the investigation that's underway. Uh, he's trying to reassure him. Uh, and at the same time, you know, he, uh, you know, he's obviously uh, taking notes uh, after the fact of everything that Trump says to him during that meeting and in subsequent meetings. So you can sort of understand why Trump would be very frustrated. Uh, he was getting these private assurances uh, from Comey that he was not the subject personally of this investigation. Uh, and yet, uh, publicly, Comey would not say these things. Uh, and so... I think that you get to kind of the frame of mind here where it's understandable that Trump would have been frustrated. W what we don't know is after the FBI decides to investigate potential obstruction in this case, is the, is the president informed? Uh, is there an effort to try to correct this impression, this uh, assurance uh, that uh, Comey had provided to Trump? We, we don't know the answer to that. You also report that the director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, and NSA director, Admiral Mike Rogers, as well as Rogers' former deputy, they're going to cooperate with the special counsel. I mean, Rogers and Coates were pretty standoffish uh, with, with the Senate Intelligence Committee just last week, at least in open session. Is it possible one of the reasons they, they did not want to go into detail is because they had already been asked to, uh, to appear before Mueller? Yeah, yeah. We we don't know the answer to that. We don't know if uh, I mean that makes sense. That's a logical uh, uh, way of interpreting this. I think um, you know uh, uh, Rogers did appear before the Senate Intelligence Committee uh, earlier this week behind closed doors, and in contrast to his uh, public appearance uh, earlier uh, in that closed door session, he was more forthcoming about a phone call that he received uh, uh, from Trump around, uh, towards uh, in in March in which uh, basically the president had asked Rogers, a similar call was made to Coates, uh, basically asking them to publicly dispute that there was any evidence of coordination between the Trump campaign and the Russians. Mueller obviously now has a lot on his plate, uh, adding this obstruction of justice investigation uh, onto it all. Even if he does find evidence of obstruction, that the president tried to obstruct justice, um, it's not clear and it seems unlikely that that the Department of Justice uh, would bring uh, criminal charges against the President of the United States. That would really be something that would be uh, done on, Cap on Capitol Hill. They would try to, uh, whatever, whatever Mueller found, yeah. it would really be up to Capitol Hill to see, to figure out what to do with it. Is that right. Right? It becomes a, becomes a political decision. You know, it, it, are, are there, uh, is there going to be sufficient uh, movement uh, on the Hill to uh, go with, uh, with, in, with an impeachment option? Um, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm pretty skeptical that, uh, that that step would be taken, at least at this point. Um, I think the thing to keep in mind here, uh, it, we are reporting tonight that 
um, that there is this expansion of the investigation to include obstruction. Uh, but there was already a previous expansion of the investigation, which uh, it was looking into Jared Kushner, uh, the son-in-law to the president and top advisor. Uh, and so, you know, obviously for the special prosecutor, uh, special counsel to go after uh, Kushner, uh, that would not require, uh, that, that doesn't uh, meet the same, uh, you know, uh, high requirements that, that it would be for going after the president if, if such a decision were taken. Uh, and I, I do want to caution here that this is uh, obviously something that may never result in accusations being brought uh, in terms of charges by uh, the special counsel. He may take a look at Comey's testimony. He may interview Comey. He may interview these other people and decide that there is no obstruction or certainly no case that he can bring on obstruction. So it's really, this is a preliminary moment. We're seeing a, a effectively a file being opened here within the FBI to basically uh, look at obstruction. That doesn't mean that this is, that's where, this, where Mueller is going to go in the end. Yeah. Uh, Adam Entis, extraordinary reporting as usual. Thank you so much from The Washington Post. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, our panel is going to uh, talk about this uh, when we come back. Plus, we're going to the latest on today's shooting, what we know about the, uh, the shooter, uh, and more about uh, exactly what happened and the condition of the others uh, who were injured. We'll be right back. Well, before the break, you heard Adam Entis reporting the Washington Post tonight about Robert Mueller's widening Russia investigation, which could now directly touch the president. Additionally, Sinez Manoraju and Tom Lobianco have this late word they are reporting that Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats will meet tomorrow with members of the Senate Intelligence Committee. A committee source saying he'll testify in closed session. His appearance comes after he promised to answer questions about whether the president pressured him to rebut stories about the focus of the, of the uh, federal Russia probe. So there's certainly a lot to talk about. Joining us now, David Gergen, Jeffrey Tubin, and Gloria Borger. Jeff Tubin, I mean, if the, the Washington Post reporting is accurate, and it's based on, I think, five sources, how big a deal is this legally for the president of the United States that he is now the subject of uh, FBI investigation to obstruction of justice? Well, Anderson, it's a huge deal, and I don't hate to tell you that I told you so. I mean, when you uh, listen to James Comey's testimony about how the president tried to get him to drop the investigation, and then you see that he fired Comey when he didn't drop the investigation, that is evidence of obstruction of justice. When you combine it with the apparent, and I say apparent, conversations between Trump and the director of uh, national intelligence, the director of the NSA, trying to stop this investigation in other ways, that's worth investigating someone for obstruction of justice. Doesn't mean that Trump is guilty, doesn't mean there's going to be an indictment, an impeachment, or anything like that, but there is clearly evidence that justifies an investigation, and this tremendous scoop by the Washington Post just makes clear that Mueller is doing his job, and we'll see how it goes. Well, I mean, Gloria, the irony of this is the president, you know, was uh, told three times by Robert Mueller that he was not the subject of any investigation by the FBI, mm -hmm. uh, by, by Comey. Okay. He is now. Right, he is. And this is all kind of self-sabotage when you think about it. Because if he hadn't fired Comey, Comey would not have believed, perhaps, that, uh, that the president was obstructing. And as he testified, uh, he said once he got fired, it's clear, he didn't say obstruction, but it was clear that that's what was going on through his mind. And then he decided, when the president mentioned there might be tapes, he decided to leak a memo through a friend that wound up in the newspapers, in the, in the New York Times. And because, With the idea of make, getting a special counsel. Right, because he wanted Mueller to know about this. Right. And that is why a special counsel was appointed. So when you look at this whole, you know, events, all of them, you have to think that in a way, Donald Trump did this to himself. Mm. And, and David, I mean, we're, we're judicious with the Watergate comparisons. You worked for Richard Nixon. It wasn't the burglary itself that brought him down. It was the cover-up. I mean, it's not uh, Donald Trump. There may be no Russia collusion. There may be no, uh, you know, improper behavior toward Russia at all. And there may still be obstruction of justice. I, Anderson, I, Gloria's point is well taken, but I think in every case in which there's been a special counsel approved, uh, appointed uh, by the Justice Department, it is because the person being investigated has essentially brought it upon himself. Uh, and, and Nixon said to David Frost after he left the presidency, what happened, he was asked, and he said, I gave my enemies a sword, and then they ran me through. 